So, two videos in a week. We're actually doing good. We're on track. We're we're doing great. Cause you know I've just been busy with work, school, social life. I've just been really busy. So getting another one out feels good to get back in the flow. But you've read the title. I'm about to talk about my first fight, and it's it's a pretty fun. This not this it was funny. Looking back at it, it's funny as fuck. Especially the ending. I love it. But let's just get started um when i was in middle school i went to phillips academy and um it was supposed to be this pretty good school it's all right like that shit's hyped the fuck up overrated as hell and um i went there and i was on the seventh grade basketball team and i was like playing with the eighth graders so you know i was just cho cooling bull and shit like that and in eighth, I mean, in seventh grade, I was never the, like, most coolest kid. Like, I wasn't cool at all. Like, I was pretty lame in middle school. And, um, it took me a while to realize that, damn, I always used to be a fucking square in middle school. But I was with the eighth graders all the time, and I was probably, like, the most lamest nigga there. Like, I didn't know anybody for real. Like, most people on the basketball team came up with those kids. Like, they've been there since, like, kindergarten. So, I was just there, like, learning and sticking with people I knew. So the eighth graders on the team, probably one of the most weirdest niggas I've ever met in my life. Um, like they would literally torture niggas. And like, it's just hilarious to think about, but it's, it was scary as hell back in like seventh grade. Like this some shit out of a movie scene. So there was this big ass nigga there. This nigga's name was AJ. This nigga was always fucking built. Like this nigga was a fucking wall, like literally made of bricks. And this nigga could do just superhuman shit. That nigga was fast as fuck. Like, you cannot outrun that nigga. You cannot outbox that nigga. That nigga was just big as fuck. And this is not the story of me getting into a fight, because God, I know better than to fight that nigga. <laughs> like, I knew better than to fight that nigga, especially like how small I was in seventh grade. Shit, man, I got my ass beat. But what he would do is he would, like, throw like he would line up like sixth and seventh graders on the back wall of the locker room and he would just throw overly pumped basketballs at them and like if you've ever been hit by a basketball at full speed and it has and, and it has like a little bit of air in it you know how hard that like that shit hurts but he was at full speed throwing pumped basketballs like you couldn't even like grip it like at niggas, and I remember one time he caught a nigga in the face, and oh my god, he that nigga bounced his head off the fucking locker. That shit was fucking crazy. But that's just for me to say, them eighth grader niggas were crazy, and like they would just do so much just gay shit, man. <laughs> like they used to be like pumping each other and shit, bro. Like it used to be weird as fuck. But I guess, man, I guess those are the times. I don't fucking know. But let's go into the story now. So. This was a home game. I forgot who it was, but it was a home game. And our home games usually take place at the downtown um, youth center, right across the street from the um, right across the street from Phillips Academy. And I remember we were watching the girls play, and we were rushing each other. And if you don't know what rushing is, we were just talking shit. We were roasting each other, just calling each other head asses and some bitches and shit. So we were doing that, and I remember this nigga name. His name was TJ. TJ was on the football team. Lineman, cool with the 8th graders, especially the 8th graders on the team. So, you know, that's going to play a part in the story next. And, you know, we were rushing each other. And this dude named Jarvis started instigating. Like, nigga was being a master instigator. Like, he was like, I bet you won't go 15 with him, though, TJ. He talking all that shit. I bet you won't go 15 with him. And no, I knew what going 15 was. It's just like you fight a nigga for 15 seconds. And it usually don't go for 15 seconds. That shit's usually a four-round fight. So that nigga got, got everybody hyped up. It's like, oh, fuck, y'all going to fight? And I was like, fuck it, you know? Like, you know, I guess I'll be cool, bro. I guess I'll be cool, and I'll go fight this nigga. And to put into, like, perspective how much bigger this nigga was than me, if you've ever seen a picture of me, Shout out Blackmore Boshi on Instagram. Go, go follow that. Um, he was as big as me. As like, this nigga was like big. Like, weight wise, this nigga had like at least 50 pounds on me. Um, so if this nigga was to grab me, I'm done. 
This nigga was about four inches taller than me. So this, this, this nigga was just ready to fuck me up at any notice. So I ain't care. I was like, you know what? I'll fight. I'll be cool. So we go to the bathroom. And it looks like girls just running in there, bro. Like 20 niggas going to the bathroom at once. And to put how this bathroom is set up, it's set up like a U. Not like with the curve, but like a line at the bottom. So it's the locker rooms and it has a little bench. You walk. You walk, and then you go forward, and it's where the bathrooms are. That's where we started. So, everybody was just, like, hyping this shit up. Everybody had their phones out, and I remember throwing the first punch. I don't know what possessed me to throw the first punch, but I threw the first punch. And then he grabbed me, and I had to, like, force myself off of him. Because if this nigga wants to grab me, I'm fucking done. So this nigga was trying to grab me. I was like punching him. Then we ended up in a stall. And we started like hitting each other. Like he was hitting, like he was grazing me. But the way he was hit, like the way he was punching, bro, he was hitting the wall. And like we went back. Like for, like I, I used to go there for like after school shit. So I went back to the bathroom and I saw like the wall he was punching because he missed. Like thank God that nigga missed. Because when I looked at the wall, there was just nothing but dents in the wall. And I was like, that could have been my fucking face. But, um, yeah, we're tussling. And they have to break us up in the bathroom. Because I was like, I just put him in a headlock. I could not I could not outpower that nigga. So I had to put him in a headlock. I'm like, let that nigga go. Let that nigga go fight him. I was like, no. And then they broke us up. And they put us back in the bathroom. So they put us back at stage one. They reset the fight. <laughs> so we started fighting again. He hit me. I ain't get rocked, but that shit did hurt because I've never been punched before. So that nigga hit me right in my fucking jaw. Like, right jaw. Just, mmm. And then we ended up, like, tussling back into the locker room. And, you know, I was like, you know what? Fuck this. Because even though I was skinny, I was a decently strong kid. So I somehow got him off of me. Like, this nigga was grappling me, and I had to, like, hit this nigga while he was grappling me. So I had to push him off of me. Like, jam my hands into his face on some sumo wrestler shit just had any any means necessary to get this nigga off of me i would have to do it because if this nigga stayed on top of me for any longer i would have got my i would have got my back slammed on a bench like i would have had my shit broken so this nigga somehow slipped I, i don't remember it being a wet spot i don't remember if his shoes were untied or some shit but i remember this nigga slipping and he fell face first and I looked at him and he was trying to get up and I took a step back and I kicked this nigga in the jaw like full force Randy Orton punt kick that nigga in the jaw and I ran out the bathroom I thought I killed that nigga because I looked at him for a second and like he just slumped over like he, his nose was like bleeding and it was like a little pool around him so I thought I killed that nigga so I ran out the bathroom and went back to the bleachers and I just heard everyone in the bathroom. It was just like, what the fuck just happened? Like, it just got quiet. And like, they were like murmuring to each other, bro. And then they were, then someone, one of my friends came out. He was like, bro, that nigga's, that nigga's out. <laughs> I was like, no, no, he's not. That, that nigga just, he, he fucking around. He's like, no, that nigga's out. And this was like, 10 minutes before we had a game so like this is like we had to get this nigga up and fucking conscious again for a fuck before a basketball game started and the best part about it he wasn't even playing like he wasn't even on the basketball team he was just sitting there chilling and then like they got him out he came out and he looked mad as fuck like he saw me look mad as fuck but he came out and dapped me up and when i told you i almost shit myself because see that hand bro his hand came out fast as fuck but he dapped me up. He said, good fight. You won't get me next time, though. I was like, yeah. And then for some reason, I I, I just became cool for some reason because I almost killed a nigga. So next day at practice, they were like, uh-oh, they go Jonathan, bro. Don't fuck with him. I was like, please don't do that, bro. Like, I almost, kill, I almost killed a nigga, bro. Don't hype me up for that shit. But before they left that year, bro, I, I was, I had, you know, I had the juice for a little bit. But... <laughs> 
at the expense of almost killing somebody, I had the fucking juice. But that is my fight story. Um, more of the story here is, um, if you borderline kill someone in a fight, you'll have the juice. You'll have the juice. But that's that. <laughs> I'll see y'all niggas later. Y'all niggas take it easy, man. Peace.